So again, for you, back to what was already uh, shown. This is a patient at the time of the stroke. This is now the patient at the time of the diagnosis, the two aneurysm and the occlusion of the uh, M1 segment. Uh, the migration of the clot after the uh, fibrinolytic agent. Uh, aneurysm at the termination of the carotid in the accessory meningeal, the clot is there. And uh, this is a, two, a TC2B that was obtained after uh, the thrombectomy. So the patient did uh, pretty well. <coughs> and now we have uh, to uh, uh, treat those two aneurysms. So it's two aneurysms are not exactly perfectly, except maybe this one, you know, fitting with a web device. But you will see that despite the fact that they are not looking perfectly suitable for a web device, uh, it's possible to, to do the treatment. A measurement of the first aneurysm which is going to be treated, we start by the distal one and then we come back to the second one more proximal. This is a small aneurysm, 3.5 uh, and 3.8 uh, in larger diameter, 3.5 at the level of the neck. There is a daughter sac here, there is another one here plus, and there is this very funny shape, as you can see. So the aneurysm is basically completely perpendicular to the bifurcation of the carotid and the origin of the M1 uh, segment. So it's a pretty ugly looking aneurysm, as you can see. You have this uh, bizarre configuration of the posterior aspect. You are looking at the sac this way. And uh, this is a daughter sac on the posterior aspect. So uh, you come from below and you have to deliver the stand this way, the, the, the web this way. The second was is a more uh, regular measurement, uh, you know, 4.8 larger diameter. The height is uh, 5 uh, millimeter. The diameter is uh, uh, 3.5. And here is a, <coughs> a small daughter sac and the origin of the PCOM. So the treatment will be performed with uh, a base camp, uh, uh, Infinity from Stryker, uh, Fargo Max in the carotid artery. Uh, aneurysm will be treated with uh, VIA-17, uh, guide wire Traxxas-14. We will be uh, delivering a scepter C balloon in case we need to tilt uh, the aneurysm, especially at this level. So the scepter C will be delivered in the lower branch, and in case we need it, you can inflate and reposition by tilting the, the, the web in the aneurysmal sac. This one is more uh, straightforward. Now you have the simulation with the Simon Cure. The simulation will be shown uh, directly. And uh, here is uh, the team. So by order of height, you have Guillaume Belanger in the middle, Laurence Pell, and on the side, Marta Iacobucci. OK. Good afternoon, everybody. You may have on the on screen the, the 3D uh, acquisition we performed today, which is more or less the same uh, uh, compared to what has been shown. So it's a little bit uh, complex uh, anatomy on the distal end of the ICA. So this is the termination uh, uh, of the ICA. And uh, I mean, the, 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 the termination uh, is uh, in fact uh, here. And you have a duplication of uh, M1 segment, the lower segment, which is definitely the largest one, and the upper one. So uh, Dr. Yakubuchi, who is uh, uh, with me today, did perform the thrombectomy on the lowest branch, the biggest one. Uh, it was uh, three weeks ago. And uh, she discovered those uh, two aneurysm. Uh, so the first one is a little bit uh, strange looking. This is the AP view, as you can see. And if I turn, it is elongated in the orthogonal, uh, in the orthogon uh, orthogonal direction. And in this uh, direction, it measures 4.5 millimeter from here to here. There is a small, uh, a small uh, bleb. So it's quite difficult to understand how we would be placing a, a web in this aneurysm. Can you send uh, the simulation on the left screen? So send uh, Simon Cure and uh, 
the 3D acquisition. Okay, so this is the simulation of uh, 4.5 uh, by 3. There is a huge constraint. Uh, so this is the upper branch of the bifurcation. This is the lowest branch of the bifurcation. So it's definitively uh, uh, not fitting inside the sack of the aneurysm. We tried uh, several uh, simulations. It's, it's a little bit tricky. And uh, you see that when uh, you are looking at the AP, which is the one you have on screen, uh, you may have a good position uh, because you have the green color uh, here. And if you look on the orthogonal view, which is the most important, uh, you apply the web uh, along the width of the aneurysm. Of course, you have some dead space uh, here, but the only option to, to fill this dead space would be to use a higher one, which would be a 4.5 by 3. Uh, because uh, we think that we need to constrain the web, we will be placing a, a scepter balloon from the termination of the ICA towards uh, uh, M1 uh, segment. So I will show you on the 3D. We'll uh, be placing a balloon from the termination to the origin of the lower part of uh, M1. Secondly, afterwards, we'll be attacking the second aneurysm, which is... Uh, uh, an aneurysm of the termination of the ICA. You see the origin of the entire choroidal artery. It's a long track of the entire choroidal artery. So there is a potential supply from the posterior circulation. <coughs> Most interesting is the small bleb that you have at the level of the neck. So we definitely want to cover the, this uh, small bleb. This is the rear view. You have the PCOM and uh, you have the entire choroidal artery. Uh, so uh, I will show you. So this is the simulation of the second, of the second uh, web. So this is a, an SLS5, which is a spherical, uh, this is a spherical um, uh, web and uh, probably we can place it a little bit more proximal. I don't know how it will behave because you have to tilt it and we'll see uh, how it uh, fit uh, regarding the origin of the entire choroidal artery. Once again, I don't care too much about occluding this entire choroidal artery because it will be supplied by the posterior circulation. So for the time being, as you can see, we have the balloon in the guiding catheter and uh, we have uh, the via, which is also in the guiding catheter. Nothing has been performed for the time. Uh, Jacques, uh, can you manage now? Okay, to ask a question while he's working. Can you t talk a little bit about what he said about being sure that it's okay to take the anterior choroidal artery? Uh, if you look at the course of the anterior choroidal artery, there is a, a territory which is supplied by the anterior choroidal artery at the level of the oncus of the temporal lobe. So when you have this cortical territory belonging to the anterior choroidal artery, there is a PL circulation. So you can refill the territory of the anterior choroidal artery without being bothered by any risk of getting uh, ischemic complications. So it's very important to feel more comfortable when you deal with the coverage of the anterior choroidal artery to know if it's a long or a short course of the anterior. If it's a long one, you have a territory at the anchors level 
and uh, you are safe regarding the potential uh, PL circulation. So this is a scepter balloon going to the lower branch of the M1 segment. It might be used to, uh, you know, protect the neck of this uh, upper aneurysm and uh, used to tilt the uh, web inside the sac of the aneurysm itself at the time you deliver the web in the sac. It's a remodeling technique, uh, the same as you have been using with the coil. so we use it very frequently <coughs> with the web. It gives you the possibility to adapt the device to a lot of different aneurysms whose configuration doesn't look uh, really suitable to a web device, uh, originally speaking. So this one is going to be much easier, but this one is... Uh, not that simple, you just need to make the web tilt in the right direction and uh, for that reason the balloon is going to be useful. Jack, if you use a less and less remodeling technique to treat the aneurysm, when you uh, use septic balloon in this scenario, how do you uh, guarantee your, your student learn the proper technique to use in balloon? No, we don't use less and less, we use more and more. Because in addition to the remodeling we were doing with the coils, we do the remodeling with the web. So it's a contrary, we do more and more remodeling. The concern is, what's going to happen in a few years from now? Uh, will we be continuing to do remodeling with coils or are we going to switch to, you know, 50 to 60% of the case with the web? You know, the, the answer, I don't know, but it's a potential evolution. Mm -hmm. But definitely, it's good to learn how to use the remodeling with the coils, and then it's not difficult to use it if you have a web. And to off the topic, is it possible to use a flow diverter to treat the two anyone at once? Well, it's possible. It is definitely possible. Uh, it's also a big uh, question. Huh? Are we going to summarize the treatment of aneurysm just by delivering flow diverter? I'm not against. I am not against. But it's a question. Jack, if you are putting a flow diverter there, I think the surgeons here will have a question because these two aneurysms are clippable aneurysms also. So you're putting a stent and then you have putting the patient under antiplatelet for a long time. I think you really have to justify the risk compared to clipping, which in the good hands is still a good option here. Do you agree with that? I agree, yes, surgery is a good option. Because these two are very close to each other, they'll get it with the same axe? I, t I totally agree. Surgery is a good option. But it's not the option, I would say, uh, in the hair. The option in the hair is to treat the aneurysm by endovascular. Sure. You know, if you cannot treat the aneurysm by endovascular, you switch to clipping, there is no question. Should you start with, endo with surgery first and quit with endovascular, I don't think it's fair. No, I wasn't saying that, I'm just saying, you know. No, no, I agree. But you know, one of the things I always think is, when we started doing webs in 2012, we used to use web as a pure intrasacular device with no adjunctive devices. But now we are seeing more and more web being used with a stand, web being used with a, with a balloon, and I'm not sure where we're going because you know, the whole idea, the purpose of the web was Intrasacular device designed for wide neck. It makes the procedure simple and quick. But we are now changing the goalpost where we are now putting a web and then we are trying to get other things to get the web fit into the aneurysm. Like this one, the web is, not, is going to be very tricky here, isn't it? You, you agree that web is going to be very difficult 
especially this aneurysm? Uh, honestly, uh, it's not easy, but it's not that tricky. You will see that once a web has been uh, is opening in the sac of the aneurysm, then you can push on it. And yeah, it's pretty safe. And then with the help of the balloon, you can reposition the web in the sack. Uh, so uh, I think we are not changing the paradigm. We are adding a potential step to the treatment of aneurysm. Sure. We were using coils. If it fails, we were putting more coils. And if it fails again, we were putting a flow diverter. Now more and more, if it's possible, we use a web. It's fancy. It's fashionable. So we use a web. And uh, if there is a recurrence after that, we put a flow diverter. The question is, why don't we start with a flow diverter? Or why don't we start with clipping? But starting with clipping, it's done already. You know, there is a study, Isaac, and I would love to start a new study. If you want to conduct a new study comparing the result of endovascular and clipping, I am absolutely happy to participate. You know, compared to the study of ISAT in 2005 and the tools we have today, you know, it would be a disaster for surgery. Honestly, it would be a disaster for surgery. For surgery. Yeah. But the experience of intervention is also a change. Previously, there were few people doing it, had a lot of experience. Today, we have a lot of people doing it with very little experience. So that changes too. Previously, there were many neurosurgeons clipping. And everybody was clipping. So if you look at ISAT, everybody was clipping. Today, there are few neurosurgeons clipping, and there are many interventionists. So you, it, there could be a difference there, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. There is no question that we have, especially in Europe, less and less neurosurgeons you know, having uh, experience in clipping aneurysms, especially the young one. So you know, everything has been shifted. And now, you know, it's more difficult to find somebody to clip than to find somebody to do an endovascular treatment. This is one point. The second point is more and more people are doing this endovascular treatment. I don't think this is a point. If all the doctors doing endovascular treatment have a perfect skill and enough patient to entertain the skin, it's not a big deal. But this is not the case. How many centers do 30 aneurysm per year? How can you offer the patient a safe and, and a proper treatment if you do 30 aneurysm per year? It doesn't make sense. And this is a big concern. It's, maybe it's not our concern in Europe, but in many countries in the world, it's a concern, yes. especially in the United States. It's a big concern. So but how can I solve the problem? You know, I don't know. So here is, uh, you know, the, the balloon is there, it's not inflated. The web is getting there, then the web is going to open. And when the web is open a little bit at the neck of the aneurysm, then you can play with it, you can push with it, and you can make it roll. And if it's not enough, uh, you inflate the balloon and uh, you deliver the web. Sorry, why don't you use the XC balloon instead of C balloon? Uh, sorry, I didn't listen to you. I, I mean, you can use the XC balloon with a more compliant balloon to maybe adjust better. Yeah, use the balloon you want. I don't care too much. Use the balloon you like to use. So you see, when the balloon is already opening with the help uh, with the, when the, with the web is opening with the help of the balloon, it has already probably tilted. You know, if you look at the 3D roadmap, you will see how the, the web is going to tilt inside the aneurysm itself. Whoa. No, 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 it's completely safe, don't worry. You are pushing the ball. So do you find now with the 17 system, the compaction of web is more than the previous webs? Jack? I'm sorry, but you know, I am speaking with Laurent, so sorry. discussing between you, no problem. I am not the only one.
So for the time being, he's uh, looking at the lateral view on the 3D, and then he will uh, project it on the 3D roadmap. We are working on the monoplane. The biplane is used by somebody else. You can see on the side uh, the tablets, uh, which is a kind of a smartphone from which uh, you control everything. So you have all the uh, projection that you have been already using. You can call back the image, you can call back the subtraction, you can call back the roadmap. You can use the middle screen to uh, magnify it in between your finger. Uh, you can bring another view inside. It's, it's everything is under control from the tablets here. So here you see that you, you have the web, which is, you know, entering the sack. It has tilted this way, so probably is a long axis in this direction. You can see it nicely here. There is a little bit of push at the base of the web. Okay, so probably the web is tilted this way. It's going to relax uh, the push in here, so we reinflate the balloon. Okay, balloon is inflated. Now you can relax the push on the web. You see the push here, very nicely here. So under the protection with the balloon, you can relax everything, bring everything back. So you know that this is the AP view, this is the oblique view. Switching to the lateral. So this is a magnification. We are going back to AP view. Balloon is still inflated, but uh, it's going to be deflated and control angiogram and vasocity. So if you look at the fluoro, uh, he's, he's a little bit pushed, like, uh, you know, he has two, two shapes uh, uh, that we call the Montgolfier, the flying balloon. So you have to resheet and reposition in a different ways.
So you reshoot a little bit the web, you keep the distal part inflated, and then you reposition the web with the constraint of the balloon. So now it's a little bit reshitted. The proximal part was not uh, open completely, only the distal one. So, you know, this portion of the web is not open. And it, this happens when you have a kink. You know, if you have the ball here and then the proximal part going that way, so it's sometimes difficult to open completely the proximal aspect of the web. So the balloon is deflated. And the web is too much under constraints. So it's obviously too big because you cannot re-enter and make it tilt, so we'll get a smaller size. This was a 4.5 by 2. We are going to switch to 4 by 2. It makes a big difference. Uh, even a half of a millimeter, it makes a big difference. So the aneurysm it's a cubic thing. looks small. I mean, comparing the size of the tip of the VS-17, it looks smaller than uh, we had it measured, at least in the AP. I guess it's larger in the lateral view. Yeah, but the real concern is, you know, as far as you can open it completely and push it, it doesn't help at all. What's the confidence level with the cement cure in this? I mean, you cement no, cure. No, uh, we demonstrated that the cement cure could not Do give it. an answer because of the anatomy, uh, this bizarre anatomy of the aneurysm. So but, we got no information from the cement cure. But how validated is cement cure for intrasacular devices well, at the moment? Well, it started, we start using it, but with the regular, you know, for example, for the second aneurysm, you will see the measurement from cement cure, and you will see that it will be working perfectly. If there is somebody from uh, Simon Cure, if they want to explain us uh, what was the problem uh, you faced when uh, you did the measurement of the uh, aneurysm, the upper aneurysm, is there somebody from Simon Cure in the room? Mr. Sanchez? Who is there? Uh, somebody is coming. Okay. Hello? Okay. So the, the problem here is that um, uh, during this simulation, we don't really, um, um, how to say? Can you, can you show the simulation, please? <coughs> it's coming. Thank you. <coughs> So, perfect. So, can you sh show the first simulation of the 4.5 by 2? Wait a minute, we, we'll put your uh, simulation in ah, the full you. screen. Yeah, perfect.
Okay. <coughs> so when you do the simulation, it's uh, so you see here we have several possible uh, dome that we selectionate to uh, anticipate the access <coughs> you will have with a microcatheter, but sometimes it's very hard to predict. Sorry. Thank you very much. <coughs> so what is very complicated to get with the simulation is uh, uh, the access the physician will have with the catheter. So this is why in the simulation process we are um, advised to simulate different kind of dome position trying to uh, anticipate all the possible uh, uh, configurations the, the, the device can have inside the aneurysm. So this is why we perform plenty of, of simulations. So here, for example, in this simulation, so the one which is displayed here, we have an access which is uh, here at the level of the sphere, blue sphere here. So we were able to, to do the simulation, but it's hard to, uh, uh, to anticipate it when the web is going out of the catheter with the, with the apex of the web, the distal apex of the web, it's difficult to, uh, to anticipate if the web is going to, uh, to deploy uh, perfectly to, um, inside the aneurysm. And here, you can see here, in this view, can you show the other simulation? I don't know. We have uh, a different shape because uh, the web is uh, uh, is in a position which is lower than here. And at the end, we see that we have a lot of uh, bulging of the device out of the neck. So this is why we try to do a lot of simulation. This, can is, this, this simulation is, uh, is very hard to, uh, to get during the physician deployment. And uh, so at the end, we, I think we had rather this result, which is not acceptable for the patient. So this is why we switch it to a uh, a four by, by two, I think. This is uh, the choice of, the, of Professor Spell, I think. So I, uh, I, I will see, we will see what happens, but uh, I don't know if you have questions about this kind of issue. No, so, so basically what you have to understand that the simulation failed. Uh, you know, he tried to explain the the reason why this simulation failed, but nevertheless, as far as uh, you know, you have also experience and you can manage uh, the treatment with your own experience. But it's going, it's, it's very useful to have the uh, help of the simulation, but when it's not possible, it's not possible. Artificial intelligence is just artificial intelligence for the time being and for this kind of uh, uh, treatment using the web, it's not that easy. So. Frequently, it's useful. It is more and more reliable. Nothing to compare with the flow diverter, but definitely the, the field is moving and improving every day. <coughs> what is the just? Yeah, there is a there is a question from the floor. Uh, what is the justification to treat three four millimeter incidental discovered aneurysm? is a patient with a history of ischemic stroke. That's absolutely important. First, the patient has two aneurysm. Uh, second, we have absolutely no real idea about the cause of the stroke that the patient has presented. And third, the first aneurysm at the level of the uh, uh, PCOM is definitely an aneurysm whose size is compatible with what we know about the uh, uh, history of the aneurysm, and it's a very good indication for treatment. I don't think that there is anybody in the room that is not going to treat this uh, first aneurysm at the PCOM level. Now you have two aneurysm. Now you have two aneurysm. You treat one and you leave the other one. The other one is not that small. It's a 5.2 millimeter larger diameter, but it's perpendicular to the axis of, it's uh, a kind of a lower limit of the indication, but it's an indication that can be debated, but I don't think there is a zero indication for treating this uh, upper aneurysm. If I Adam, would you treat it in US?
No. Okay, so now the web has been repositioned with the constraint of the balloon. It has been delivered from the neck or even a little bit outside, as you saw. So I have a question to the panel. I'm three, four of you are using web regularly. And um, Jack talked about artificial intelligence and you're using human intelligence for the sizing. Mm -hmm. And um, how often, how often do you have to change a device or you realize that the sizing, all of your experience now, so the sizing has gone wrong at this stage? As far as experience is growing, less and less often. Yes, I think we've got better, but we still land up quite often changing it like what do you, there's no, I don't use cement cure and I, and microvention have come uh, with some different way of sizing. I still don't use it. I still do the same way I used to do all the time and it works for me. To answer the question regarding the percentage of cases in which we have to change the device, you know, I was analyzing that with the 21 system and you know, uh, and it was coming after, let's say, uh, more or less 80 cases treated with the web uh, deal and web SL. And we were changing the size of the device approximately in 20% of cases. But let's say that it's not my most recent experience, uh, probably, but still we change sometimes uh, the size of the device. But that is with you or the people who are using a lot here. But I think if you are new to the system, you probably will have higher rate of changing the size of the device. Do you agree with that? I think you need, your experience yes. has to grow with web and it takes time to get used to your own machine because Siemens, Philips, everywhere it's different and you get to have to get used to your own machine. So, so it, it just, now, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Let, let's have a look at the live. Uh, as you can see, this is just looking at the uh, regular fluoroscopy and angiogram. The web has been repositioned. Just by changing from a 4.52 millimeter to a 4.2 millimeter, you know, the delivery was much simpler. And it seemed that, you know, looking at the lateral view, the, the web is a little bit more uh, perpendicular to the bifurcation. Looking at the uh, at the regular fluoroscopy, looking at the regular fluoroscopy, it looks nice. But you know, we want to be sure that it's nice, and we will we will not uh, detach the web at this level. We will be doing a, a vaso CT to be sure that uh, it's uh, perfectly opposed to the neck and fit in with uh, the sac of the aneurysm. Did he do an angiogram? Well, it's just Look good. So what I was going to say is I think this is a difficult uh, case and Jacques and Laurent are showing it to us because they can show what is possible with uh, balloon remodeling. But it's a, it's a fairly irregular aneurysm and so I think that increases the chance that maybe you try a size and pick a different size. Yeah. In, in really experienced hands uh, like Laurent's, I, I bet they use, in, in routine practice, they probably uh, uh, use the wrong web less than 10% of the, the time. Uh, I think in the U.S. we're doing more switch outs because, as you said, it's a totally new thing. I mean, it's, it's a completely different neurointerventional skill uh, compared to stenting an artery or, or placing coils or using a liquid embolic, and it, it does take time to get used to the sizing. And I think over the years, I think we all realize if you, want, if you can go for a bigger size, go for a bigger size. You go for a bigger size because invariably you'll be right. Right. So this is a good example of that. They tried a four and a half. Sure. If it had worked, that's great. But they were able to remove it and replace it very quickly right. and very safely with a smaller device. Right. It looks to me like the, the smaller device is going to cover the neck nicely and, and fix the aneurysm. No, but there are two very important points is what uh, Adam is saying, you know, which is one, 
uh, when we gain some experience with a device, we have a tendency to push indication, which is true. It's a difficult indication for web, by the way. So, uh, on, uh, as soon as you push the indication, you, the chance you you miss the target at the beginning in terms of sizing is relatively high. But when you treat quite regular aneurysm, uh, indeed, you have less chance of changing the size of the device. So, you know, we, we, we are, in, in the same time, we are progressing, but because we progress, we push the indication, so it becomes more and more difficult to select the right side, etc., etc. So it's this, a complex process. And this is a difficult aneurysm because it's got a different shape and it's got a different That's, lobule, so it's yeah, difficult to size it. It's a difficult aneurysm, for sure. Just, just to make it clear, it's a, it's a difficult aneurysm for web. For other no, technology, it's, it's a straightforward aneurysm. It's, you agree? Yeah, yeah, I agree that it's a difficult aneurysm for web. No, no, we, we replace and we reposition the whole scene in the context. It's not an easy aneurysm for the web device, definitely. So we redo the vaso CT because the balloon was still in position and the uh, wide, the wire in the balloon was still there. So there is a blurring effect. Oh, but all what you can see is you know the web seems to be perfectly at the level of the neck, well anchor on the wall, and uh, even if there is this left, uh, if it is confirmed that the web is well located at this level, we will detach it. But we redo the vaso CT to avoid the blurring effect of the wire. Jack, do you? Can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah. In these type of aneurysms where you have an asymmetric aneurysm and you put a web, which many of us have done in the past, and I've found some of them have recurred because the web has gone in, because invariably we realize that either there was a little bit of flow from the back, and then six months down the line, or two years down the line, or four years down the line, you land up with a little bit of neck, and then in a few years, you got a good recurrence of the aneurysm. Do you think, uh, what's your experience with that, and particularly with the 17 system now, do you think you're seeing, going to see more of that because it's softer? Honestly, I don't think so. Uh, but it's a personal feeling, it's not uh, statistical uh, data. Uh, I don't think so. What we see frequently, of course we have recurrences, no question. But what we see frequently is compaction of the web and a good coverage of the neck. So sometimes, most of the time, usually, you know, when you have a recurrency, it's not necessarily because there is a big compaction of the web. It's because probably the web has moved a little bit or tilted a little bit in the sack. But very frequently, we see compaction of the web and nothing happens at the neck or very little at the neck, and you have the concave shape of the device, which is a normal anatomy after that. So the, the compaction is not necessarily related to recurrence. This is something that is important to notice. Mm. It's not what we were thinking at the beginning, but this is what we think now. Compaction doesn't mean recurrence, and recurrence doesn't mean necessarily compaction. Yes, personally, I think we have not to use the word uh, compression. I think it's not compression, I think it's retraction, because we have both proximal and distal marker moving uh, in the direction of the center of the device. I think it's retraction and it's, uh, it's uh, let's say, part of the healing phenomenon. Huh? So, and we, we are conducting an analysis in a series of a city in France, which is two, and we were showing that there is no correlation between uh, modification of the shape or retraction of the web and anatomical results. So, you know, I think it's just part of the, of the healing process. And we have some uh, data regarding this, which we are already shown by uh, the engineer of uh, microvention sequence, and uh, we have also some clinical data that are confirming this uh, hypothesis, you know. You know, uh, after discussion, we have decided that the web is perfectly plugged at the neck of the aneurysm. It covers completely and sealed the neck. 
We don't care about this uh, portion there. We are not obliged to feel completely the aneurysm. And the necessity is to have something which is occluded in the sac at the level where it's well anchored to the wall of the aneurysm. So uh, the web is going to be detached here. And then we switch down to the other one, which definitely is going to be easier. This was a four by three web? Four by two. Four by two. So that's another important point is that the device is under good compression, right? It looks, you know, thinner than it is tall now. Uh, and, it, you know, in, in native, it would be twice as wide as it is tall. So it's a good indication that it's likely to be occluded within a few months, if not a few hours. So we are used to detach the web under uh, full subtraction. So you can see a little bit of the motion of the distal part. Uh, so it gives the information that the web has been detached. So you see the pusher of the web is there, so it's going to come down, so the web has been retracted. So the VI is just at the level of the tail of this, and the tail, you know, it's sometimes it's invaginating inside the, 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 the device itself. Yeah, sometimes it's so now the it. tail is hanging in the middle of the bifurcation. It happens very frequently, but mm. uh, it's not a problem. Okay, so you see the web is uh, very well uh, occupying the space at the level of the neck. Looks pretty good. Bulging there. Covering the neck. The tail is hanging in the bifurcation. So it's going to be a nice result on a long-term basis because it's completely plugged at the neck and, uh, you know, we are here. In fact, the web is there. So you have the bleb, you have the corridor artery. It works on the table on the tablets here. So it did have some protrusion over the vest in the outside the aneurysm. So will you use a double antiplatelet after the treatment? If there is a bulging, uh, yeah, you can use a double antiplatelet if it's really bulging out. Uh, frequently, the best is to put a stent. You put a laser cut stent, open cells, so it pushes the web. I don't try to reposition the web with the balloon when it has been deployed. You can change the deployment of the web with the constraint of the balloon, but when the web has been deployed, the balloon won't change anything. Jack, I give perioperative six weeks of aspirin. Do you do that? Uh, oh, no, probably, you know, when there is a little bit of, you know, when the vessel is small, when the tail is right in the middle, you can uh, give several days of aspirin if you want. I, you know, if it makes uh, you feeling more comfortable, it's fine. But now you see already that, uh, you know, after a little bit uh, of relaxing of the vessel, after the different constraint, you know, the result is, is absolutely perfect. You know, these kind of things, uh, honestly, be, we have to be honest with you. Don't jump on an aneurysm like that the first time you use a web, for sure, okay? Once you have a little bit of experience, move to this, understand how you can position, use the balloon, get a good result, but if you start with this aneurysm as a beginning, you will be discouraged and you risk a, a big complication. So. Jack, if I may make a comment. So somebody mentioned surgery. There's no doubt you can treat this for surgery, but that's not the purpose of this course. No. The purpose of this course is not to say, well, maybe you should do it this way or that way. The purpose is to, at least for me, is to see what is being feasible. And I have to say, this is uh, pretty impressive. No, you know, as far as you start your uh, experience with the web, even after one year or a year and a half, you know, you are still amazed of this kind of result. 
once you have more experience, you know. First, if we decided to treat this aneurysm with the web, it, because we saw that it was possible to do it. Otherwise, we would not expose the device and ourselves in a live uh, demonstration in a case which is desperate. So we are not here to feel like a hero. Uh, the hero is a patient. So honestly, all the cases that have been demonstrated today uh, and yesterday were just the cases that we think it's possible to do the treatment. Some of them are very simple. Some of them are more complicated. But you know, basically, we have the feeling according to our experience, that it is possible to do the treatment with the web. I'm not saying that you should do it, but it's as uh, Fadi said, you know, at least you can see what's possible to do with a given device if you have the experience. Project technology is getting better and better, isn't it? I mean, if we look at it now, we've got one more intracellular device is coming in the market very soon, hopefully and there'll be probably more coming in. So something like this, like you could again, for me now, I would probably instead of web, because the sizing can be a problem, I probably would contour it, because it's easy for me to put a contour with that size, four millimeter contour. Um, you know, the sizing is not a problem, it's easier to put smaller catheter. So I think contour would do the same job. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't disagree, but I have no experience with a contour. So, and we cannot use it in France. At least, yes. I'm, I'm, I know, but do you still belong to Europe in England or not? No, we got still a few weeks. Okay. <laughs> a few months. Okay. So you vote for Europe, but you are outside of Europe. You've always been outside Europe. Yes, I agree with you. Thank you have always been outside in Europe, and you have always had I was born the outside best Europe. position in Europe outside. So I don't understand why you decided to quit. Okay, we'll have that. Debate. Everybody <laughs> makes mistake. Yeah. Okay. See, we, because we're gonna get contour once we get outside Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we don't. No, no, have we don't have. We cannot use a contour because there is no C mark. So I cannot tell you. We don't have experience about using web. But I'm curious that when you're using the via caster into the aneurysm, is it possible to thin shape the caster? It is. Shape? It is, absolutely. It work or not? Yeah, yeah, it works. Okay. Does it worry you that there is a nipple just at the neck? Because like for this type of aneurysm, you need the web coming very close to that anterior choroidal, and, and there is a nipple, right? And you, if you put a web in, you got to cover that nipple. Otherwise, the purpose of the treatment is doesn't work. So you want to cover the nipple, so you will have to get the web very no, close. No, 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 no. Are you we, going to we, take... we want to cover this portion of the neck, and we don't care about the origin of the entire choroidal. So you will lose so, it if you. No, you can bring the, the 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 bottom of the web close to the neck, and if it doesn't go uh, directly uh, just by deployment, then you can put the balloon and pull on the web. No, I get, I get that, I think. But, you know, having uh, some neurosurgeons here who might disagree with us, I um, mean, you could see Adam changing and thinking um, about the anterior choroidal. You would be, would you be comfortable losing the anterior choroidal? I would not. No. So, uh, that's why I, I was I'm asking. Just, I'm just putting that, a debate here. Well, that's why Jacques' teaching was that the long course of the anterior choroidal artery sure. means there's peel supply. But no, surgically, we're taught to be See, very, very worried about the anterior choroidal. Not to look at it funny, not to manipulate it, not to clip it, because you can get, uh, um, at least from my perspective, an unpredictable extent of stroke in the operating room from the anterior choroidal. So, so I've, I've clipped PCOMs where the anterior choroidal was open, but I ended up with a stroke just from manipulation of the artery. So uh, you learned something today? Uh, yes. No, he, he, didn't, he didn't learn because he doesn't trust. Okay. Yeah, you know, I remember I, I had a big fight with Robert Spetzler. We were in Houston. I don't know if Mike and Mike will remember. We were in Houston and because of the schedule, you know, he was speaking just before me about the risk of clipping the P1 segment of the basilar. And just after that, I was speaking about how safe it is to occlude the P1 segment. 
So you can imagine that there was a big debate. At the very end, the debate finished by, you know, you know, you lie, you lie. So I came with a paper, unfortunately it was in French, explaining all the kind of distribution of the perforators according to the division of the basilar territory, and I was not very gentle with him, and I regret, and I did regret, in many, many occasions in front of everybody. At the end of the talk, I said, you know the difference between you and me? You speak with superstition, I speak with knowledge. It was too much. Yeah, but you can say that to him, not did, me. Uh, did you get invited back? No, I, I'm interested in learning, so I'm, I'm, I want to learn more about the anterior choroidal artery. I don't know about this, and uh, it's not that I don't trust what I'm told. I just need to learn more. Hopefully honestly, I'm educable. <laughs> Hopefully honestly, I, there is a paper in 1970 or something like that that was written by Jacques Theron. If you want to know everything on the anterior choroidal territory, look at this paper. Everything is inside. Everything is inside. The problem, as I see it, and I have you know, a lot of respect for you, Jacques, and the French school, uh, the problem is that when, if an event does not happen, does it mean that it didn't happen because we know something or because we just got lucky? No, no, we do it on purpose. When we occlude the anterior choroidal artery, if we know that there is a PL territory, we don't care. When we know that there is no PL territory, we care. So we have to learn about that. Yeah. The other question that from my uh, non- Okay, okay, I wait, wait a minute, let's go back to, uh, I will answer you. So this is a Kankant web, as you can see, it's, it's a much easier uh, delivery. It's an SLS, I don't remember the size. It's not really, uh, you know, occupying all the space, and because it's a pretty large uh, stand, uh, web, then you have to reposition the whole thing. So it's more at the bottom of the aneurysm, much more. Uh, this is, I don't remember the size, uh, uh, five, SLS five, five millimeter. You know, SLS, it's a kind of uh, rugby balloon. Uh, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not a cylinder, it's not a true sphere, it's in between a sphere and a cylinder, it's like a rugby balloon. So both extremities are flat, but uh, smaller than the larger diameter. So it's very interesting. We are uh, you know, trying to use more and more the SLS, and the reason is very simple. The retraction of the SLS is much, much lower than the retraction of the SL. I think this is uh, just because of the Hegg phenomenon. You know, you can walk on the Hegg when you, you, you compress it on the height, and when you go from the side, it's, uh, it's a completely different song. So it doesn't bother you that the SLS, the height is a bit more. Yeah, we are looking. We are looking at what's happening here. So you know, this uh, border of the neck is completely uh, opposed to uh, the border of the vessel. Uh, there is a, a kind of uh, inclined border here. I have not seen if the anterior choroidal artery is occluded or not. But the nipple's already gone. To yeah. your nipple. According to what you see it. at the base of the aneurysm, it's probably open. Yeah, it's open, no problem. And uh, the bleb at the level of the neck here, it's completely occluded too. But Jack, one question. Yeah, so, so we detach, we do the vasocity, we detach in front of you, so we do a blank, subtraction, detachment. Now it's detached. This the pusher, pusher is uh, down, it's already outside of the tail. And there is stagnation, last control, and we'll show you the vasocity after the, after the Santiago case. We have two questions from the audience. How big is the risk of dislocation, rotation of the web? Dislocation, rotation. Oh, yeah. What is dislocation? I don't know. Rotation. We, um... Look at the result already there. It's a small one. Very well anchored at the level of the neck. Complete occlusion already. Yeah. Thank you. Are you worried about that?